pledge and then a prayer by Commissioner Patton, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our gracious and holy Father in heaven, we approach thy throne this evening in the most humble manner we know how. Ask you look down upon with your tender mercy to bless us with patience and to understanding and wisdom to conduct the business of our city and to make decisions that are fair and equitable to all people. Bless us in our efforts this night and all through our life. Let deliver us from the evil one in Christ's name. Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone out tonight. Uh, first items, approval of minutes. Make a motion we accept minutes, approve minutes. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next is the bills. Move to pay all bills. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. I'm not showing any old business, so we're going to do business of the ordinance. Yeah. We're going to keep a copy. Uh, yeah. Here. Oh, I was supposed to keep one. AB, you need a copy of the back? I got it. I've got an She doesn't have one. See what we got down to here? Oh, she's not going to have one. Are they not here? Another one to go down. Does Larry need one? Give it to Larry. Okay, this is one of the ordinances we talked about sometime on the water bills and the landlord tenant issue. Well, this would be the first, first reading. reading. Yes. I make a motion that we accept the first reading of the ordinance pertaining to water bills and landlords. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second on the ordinance. Uh, this is pertaining to collection of water bills from between uh, landlords and tenants. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by the aye. Uh, post same. Motion passes. Shelby, I'll get you a, I have a copy. Or this is the first reading, so we have to do another second reading of it. Okay. Uh, next item, I'm going to go ahead and move under new business is something I think we've talked to most of you about. Uh, we found out that there was a change in our employee handbook made at some point, and there were some wholesale changes made, and I think one of them kind of got overlooked. But uh, this has to do in regards to sick and personal days for our salary personnel. Uh, we have one that was grandfathered in, but two that's not under it. And I would like to go ahead and uh, recommend we change that policy back to the way it was initially before. You just want to make back to the original way? Yeah, back to the before. original. So it shouldn't have been changed at the first place, right. right? It was just an oversight on our part. I think we go back to the original. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? I think it's Yes. <coughs> Those in favor signify with aye. 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 Opposed, same. The motion passes. Okay, Commissioner Crump, you have anything? No, not at this point. Okay. Sandy? I think 
My, I think I've got people here that we'll talk about. My apologies. At the ages of 59 and 55, my husband and I are becoming parents to a 17-year-old. So I've been <laughs> dealing with him, and I was like, okay, I'm running late. So Mama Jolene had to jump in and <laughs> take over Mama Didi's again. But no, I think probably what these folks are here to talk about is probably what I would talk about. So we'll just okay. wait and talk together. Okay. Charles? No. I think Black Justin, I'm not going to let him bring it up. All right. You're going to do yeah. it. I'm good. I'm good. Very good. Larry? No. Uh, update the air packs for the fire department that we bought. They're in. Uh, got them in, I think, two weeks ago. So we got a portion of them in this budget. And we'll finish up <coughs> next cycle for next Okay. Week. I will say, too, and I didn't mention earlier, doesn't take any uh, action at this time, but I did get a text message from David Stevens, our fire chief. They are in Sarasota, Florida. Mm -hmm. With the new truck. I got pictures of it. Yeah. I told you, yeah. Very nice. So they're doing the testing today and tomorrow. I guess they'll be back Wednesday morning. And then if all everything pans out, the new truck will be set up for delivery to us. So that's a plus. Okay. <clears throat> Officer Shepard, do you have anything you'd like to? No. <laughs> Mike. Uh, yes, we have one officer that uh, has left us. Uh, his last day was December the 31st. Uh, Officer James Sparks, uh, I'd like to ask that uh, you all accept his letter of resignation. Uh, and that was December 31st was his last day of uh, I move to accept the resignation of Officer Sparks. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. And then I have a Officer, a certified officer that I'd like to ask uh, that you all would uh, make a motion to hire. Uh, his name is Mitchell Graham. Uh, he's been a partner for 10 years. Uh, he's going to come to work for us uh, Sunday night, next Sunday night. And I'd like to ask that we start him at 2150 and after 90 days he goes to 26. And he is certified. Is that what the other current officer, patrol officer, is making? Do what? Is that the same as the other patrol officer? Yes. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed, same. The motion passes. <coughs> and today, and today's his 40th birthday. I saw on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Which is 40. Is yeah. that, uh, we met with KLC. They recommended a bunch of policy changes, which will help us on our grade that we get. That would help maybe get a little on our insurance. So uh, I'll be working on those this next month uh, because there was like 23 of them, uh, and still is dealing with the Rihanna Taylor. Uh, deal that happened in George Floyd. So I'll have that ready for, for y'all next next business, uh, next business meeting. Uh, to put it. And also uh, I'll have the yearly stats for next, next month when we meet again. All right, okay. All right folks. <laughs> you guys, are y'all going one at a time? Are y'all going to the group or are y'all done? Oh, I'm sorry. It, 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 I haven't really heard anything you said since I've been here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I said something like that. I don't know. You know. I'm uh, sorry. Everything. Yeah, uh, we're. I think you're all not as a group, but we're all here for the same reason, and that is the flooding on uh, South Lafayette Street. I was here in 2020, and we addressed the problem, or uh, we talked about it. Um, it's got worse since then. Continually worse. And they were promises made to check into what could be done, what Beaver Dam could do about uh, redirecting the water or deeper ditches or faster drainage or whatever needed to be done. And uh, as far as I know, nothing has been done. Oh, I haven't no. seen anything. We, we clean the ditches yeah, out. I missed something. But yeah, we clean the ditches out every summer. Yeah, well, I've noticed we, the ditches, like the one going uh, by the Taylor Street out that way, mm -hmm. across underneath. 231 there, I, I, it, I every once in a while look at it and it, it appears it needs to be cleaned out every time and I've seen no evidence that it has, maybe refilling or something, I don't know, I don't 
check it every week, but it looks like it needs. And then how about down through the amphitheater and all down in there? The ditches as deep as we can get them and wide as we can get them and where we can have. This is headwater that's coming in it's, too it's, fast. It's, it's not draining out fast enough. But there's no place for it's, it's no to go. It's headwater that's coming in fast. And uh, I will tell you, uh, like I said, we clean the ditches out every summer because of the issue with the corn stalks, and I know we're all aware of those. You're talking uh, just a little oh, bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I see you don't have mics up in this room. Well, we, clean the, we work out there to clean the ditches out every summer just because of the issue we've had with the flooding. And of course, the corn stalks over the last, what so much last year as it was the year before was a problem. I spent the better part of last Tuesday on the phone with legal counsel through KLC and with Department of Transportation trying to find out what, if anything, we can do or can work with the landowner to, to remedy that problem. And I have found out, actually, there's not much we can do. There is a thing in Kentucky state statute, along with all other 50 states, called the Agriculture Supremacy Clause, which basically says agriculture does agriculture, and we have there's nothing we can do to tell them what to crop, how to crop, building setbacks, anything, other than unless they're doing a major commercial or industrial project because I had hoped to be able to do something that way. I even asked if we annexed the property, could we do anything? And it still falls under that agricultural supremacy law. So I have, we've been talking with the state. Problems we have with a lot of the culverts on 231 on Main Street, they have bottoms in them. So obviously we can't make the ditch deeper than what the bottom of the culvert is. Can't make the ditches wider than what the width of the culvert is because again, that's gonna slow it all down anyway. We have worked through the park. We get down to just east of the uh, bridge going over to the amphitheater, and then the creek goes through property that we don't own on either side of it. Someone else owns on both sides of it. <laughs> it's a, yeah, we all, well, we're not even sure who it is. It's a bunch of heirs. But we are in the process of trying to obtain ownership of that property. When we get that property, then we can go ahead and clean it all the way out to Bruce School Road. But then we run into problems again where it hits individuals and getting that done. And the railroad property. Mm -hmm. uh, now, with that being said, I've talked to the state. I know they're planning some work on uh, Liberty Road. It's supposed to be repaved, I think he told me this summer. And then they're hoping that by next spring they will have funding available to go in and do some work on one of the bridges on it and change it out to a culvert. We've also been doing some looking, checking with the railroad. There's two railroad trestles across that bridge down in behind. I don't know if you all are familiar with where Oswald Bratcher lived. It's on Liberty Road, but it's on past where the old railroad crossing was at. There are two trestles back there. Uh, it holds, obviously, any, any kind of obstruction holds something back. So we're going to reach out to the railroad. The state highway department's already talked to them a little bit about it to see if the railroad might be willing to take those two trestles out. Uh, they go to that sideline that used to go out by the old Thomas Industries and, and Tamerlane and out to one of the coal mines. Uh, the rails have been paved over on Liberty Road, so I can't imagine why they're planning on using it again, but I can't answer that question, and that's what we're trying to find out, if they'd be willing to do that. Other than that, you know, I've talked to uh, through the Department of Agriculture. The water, all this water goes down through the park and then there by the railroad and comes into one, goes under Liberty Road, down by the railroad, out towards Davis Road, curves back around, crosses U.S. Highway 62, somewhere around the Charles Barnard property. There's two, two creeks there, so I'm not sure. I think it's the first one coming from town goes back in behind the subdivision like where uh, Levi Rice lived and the medical arts, back in behind the farm owned by Frizzell's and Ray Brackett, and then ties into Muddy Creek that crosses right there by McDonald's. My goodness. The so, water that comes from here goes all the way around the city of Beaverdam, comes out of McDonald's. And it stopped at somewhere past... Well, it can't go because once it gets to a certain spot out there, it gets to a part, part point where it starts backing up. It can't yeah, go out they fast. Explain it and they do but that's private property. property. We can't well, touch that. So. And another problem we have, we can do it on in this within the city, and we've done we do that every, on on occasion with the city property, uh, keeping the ditches cleaned out. 
number one, like you say, what Kevin's talking about, it is going on to private property when you get out through there. But we have another issue that we have to deal with is the fact that the Kentucky Division of Water and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has jurisdiction over these creeks because according to the Clean Water Act back in 1991 or two, they are considered waters of the United States. And getting a permit to clean out a ditch with the Corps is next to impossible. They have what they call point and non-point source pollution. They say they will let you dip stuff out of it, but then you have to put it immediately into a truck and haul it off site somewhere. Uh, if anything were to fall back into the creek, if you take a tree out and the dirt falls off the rootstock, you're violating the Clean Water Act. Uh, so you're looking at Number one, private property. Number two, uh, I know town how long a permitting process through Kentucky Division of Water and Corps of Engineers, and then the sheer cost of cleaning it out for that distance of time. I know a little bit about this because back in the day, my father used had some excavators and a drag line, and we cleaned those creeks out back during the late seventies and the, through the eighties until the laws changed in the early nineties, and that stopped all of that cleaning out that kind of stuff like that. So that's where we ran into a problem as far as going downstream. About all, all we can do is you have a big rain and try to wash it out the best it can. And, uh, but when we bought this property, the, if the streets flooded, it flooded some. Mm -hmm. But since they cleared that land off, it took them trees out. Now see, that caused it. So I, why can't we go back on the property? Because well, now, one, I'm not saying that in this, the, you as landowners and probably your insurance company could probably very well have. Um, have you been in touch with the porters? Just about the corn stalks? Can they, yeah. can they grind them? Can they, they can, can but that's it, they're not required by law to do that. I, 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 I didn't say anything about the law. No. Just that we talked to them and maybe they would do that as a courtesy. I we, called Chad and talked to Chad. He said that the, the intentions were to lime the fields this fall mm -hmm. and they was going to chisel plow, which was going to inject the material in the ground. The line never got established on the property, so therefore they did not chisel plow. He advised me that he wants to be a good neighbor. He's, yeah. he's going to try to do everything, and, and Chad will. Absolutely. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we, who, who owns that, that land there across from my house that I can talk to, that I can go and say? The first, no, no. The first oh. section's right on Lafayette. Lonnie Halls Lonnie owns Lafayette. some of it. Lonnie sold it. He did. It's, it's, it's the, the other side of Lonnie's, Lonnie's house there, that, that big field there. So well, the, Lonnie so, own it? No. Well, according to the maps today, I looked at he does, so I don't yeah, know. I was told today that the porters bought Yeah, I saw the porters bought it off of Lonnie. Okay. Bought it or leased it? Bought it. I knew porters had bought the Lake and Brown farms. And then the other property owner was uh, Benita Snodgrass and Kent Snodgrass owns a section in there that's right across from the Smith's house. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that if you've talked to anybody in the state that had maybe any ideas, because if you go out, it, it, may, it seems like you're going out of, at Beaver Dam. Well, this area that we've been talking about going around, is this all in Beaver Dam no. or is it outside of Beaver Dam? No, outside. it goes outside. 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 Have you talked to anybody in the state that had maybe any pull or any uh, ideas of what they could do? That's where I spent, like I say, last week when all this came up again, trying to find some answers, and I'm not getting any any yet. Like I say, I've talked with the State Department of Transportation because I figured they would probably have more teeth than anybody since U.S. Highway 231 is a federal highway and it was impacted like it was. Mm -hmm. And they are looking to try to see what remedies they can find, but at the same time they told me not to get my hopes up too high because, again, farmland and farming operations have a lot of protections under the law. But they allowed them to cut the trees and clear that land off real smooth, so it comes that direction. Uh, Why couldn't they? They made the water come that way. It didn't come that way before. Well, the, the rains we have these days are not like the rains when I was a child. You know, it would rain all day long with well, an inch or two inches. Now, yeah. now we're getting five inches an hour. I mean, yeah, this is yeah, just that's, that's part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big issue. 
But I talked to somebody that before I bought the house that lived there for a little, many years, and they said, well, you know, get up on the road sometime, and you know, but nothing like it is now. So no, I don't. either it's gotten worse since it was cleaned up. I more, but it's also some, you know, the lay of the land's been changed somewhere down here. It doesn't take much to, to clear it out where it'll flow faster, and faster is the problem. One of the high, one of the guys with the highway department asked me about the possibility of planting a row of trees back on the back on the property. Again, that's private property. We can't go off and do anything with that. Well, don't the city own so much from the highway or the road? Just to the middle center of the ditch. Yep. Center of the ditch. Yeah. And then it's out of your hands. Yep. And that's. Now, like I said, we've not given up. We're still trying to find some alternatives. Uh, Highway's still working on it, and I've got a meeting next next week, into next week with KLC again on their legal counsel, trying to see if they've come up with anything. So we're not not doing it. It's just we're trying to find something to do, and any loophole we can find. And, and one thing you have to they're hard. One thing you have to understand too is. We've got a multi-million dollar park sitting down there that the water goes right over the top of. We'd love for the water to get cleaned up as much as you guys would, but we haven't been able to figure out a way to do it yet. But we have, we have a, a, a dog in this fight also. You know, we have got a big investment down there that gets flooded. When yours gets flooded, ours gets flooded. We would love to get it fixed, and we haven't been able to do it yet. I'm saying yet. It may get done. Next year, five years from now, ten years from now. I don't know, but I'm hoping it does. Because, like I said, the city of Beaverdam has a big investment down there right now. And I'd hate for it. So do these people the, with these I, I agree, but I'm just saying. I mean, this has been going on for years. And again, I'm not years. arguing that fact. I just want you to understand. We're trying to get it done, too. It's not just you guys being upset. It's us, too. We want it to get fixed. I know the Smiths, I know you guys have been there since sometime in the 70s. Oh, yes. Is that right? Cause when did y'all? 73. 73. 73, okay. Yeah. So my best friend grew up on the opposite end of, so I remember the flooding in that area. Do you see a difference no. now based upon how it was back in the 70s? Because I think it got in your house. It don't even compare. Yeah. Back then, you know it would come across the road. We didn't have to drive away a little bit. It wouldn't get under our house like it does now, and in our storage building, yeah. in our house. It's where building. all that farmland yes. has been cleared. They had to take all of their heating and cooling yes. from out from under their house because it flooded. It was about to come in their house and had to, I mean, the money they have spent through the years, it, it's just sad. It, it's it's uh, sad for everybody down there. Checked, and I, was, I talked to somebody in the office a few days ago. And they, somebody was supposed to check with FEMA uh, and see if there's any help for it. Because, I mean, this, this, this cleanup alone, just, you know, the damage it's doing is one thing, but just the cleanup, especially with those corn stalks, it's just getting very expensive. So has anybody checked? I think for FEMA to step in, the county has to declare a national a disaster. disaster. The county did declare okay. a Charlie's disaster. Been, Charlie's been in works with We're just trying to figure out if there was enough right. so disaster to get funding. People enough damaged enough houses, that I mean. Yeah, and if it, and they're going to find out there was other if and I don't know. I know they had a actually they had more rainfall I think than we did in Muhlenberg County. I don't know anything about what's going on there. Charlie was going to check to see if their county issued an emergency declaration of emergencies as well. The more counties you get, obviously, the better your chances are working something out with FEMA. So, I mean, is this something, I, I, I maybe I didn't hear it, right. is this something y'all are appealing to FEMA or is this county? would be through the county because the county, through, through the county emergency management, yeah. Oh, okay. And okay. I now, work. Is there anything that I need to do? <laughs> do I need to call FEMA and complain or do I just need to wait and see what they do? Right now, I would say let's wait and see what Charlie finds out because he's Charlie, yeah, he's right. the contact person with all of it, and I wouldn't even know where to begin to tell you to call because anytime I've ever called FEMA, I get a recording and they tell me to punch one for this and two for that. And I work with Jason Bullock, who's the Beaverdam magistrate, and of course we talk about this situation some too. And I know that the county is trying to do everything that they can to help Beaverdam and to help this situation. Um, it's like I've never seen it before, and I've 
grew up here. I was born at Ohio County Hospital, so I don't get much more county than, than that. And it's, yeah, the last few rains that we've had, it's, I've never seen it like that before. It's been something else. But we don't like it. Yeah, I grew all. up down on the south end of town and like the others did. And we'd ride our bike through the water back in 1960. But I wouldn't yeah. let a kid ride through that water now because it's too dangerous. He, he lived next door it's, to my best friend. It was just <laughs> I little, lived closer to where they lived. I was just five or two south yeah. Lafayette. Yeah. And it it's was just two, three inches. Now it would get me a foot. And it scared me sometimes hand. watching the water. I wouldn't allow a kid to play in it. Well, you play in it. Not now. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Back then, whenever you could wade through the ditch, but when he gets in the house, yeah. Larry just doing damage. Okay. Real elementary, I don't know, but during wild like while it is flooding, we see the drains are stopping up with the corn stalks. Can they be like dug during the rain? Is it too dangerous to bring the equipment? Like we when it, when we was come in for work, or I can't believe I slept through it. But when we come in, we had issues. The police department told me that I was down there, so I sent the backup operator down there, and we was we was plunging. <laughs> try to make everything go. Mm -hmm. you know, the, like during the act of Yes, right. yes. Yeah. So the, the, the dish that it feeds into that goes by the amphitheater, we have it cleaned every year. You know, I was out $7,000 you know, 2022 from the back of Patton's cabins to 231. It gets cleaned out every year. We get meadows mm -hmm. to clean it with their lawn sticks. Mm -hmm. so, and it, it, it's just so much silt in it. Right. Is there, uh, have, the, have the NES meadows, NES to bank given an idea of what they can do without yes. force touching those yes. walls or anything? Yes. That we could try? Yes. You know, if, like Paul said, you, you can't go any deeper because of the, of the concrete. Concrete, the yeah. You can't go any wider, basically, because of the width of them. So, is Taylor Street, is that concrete? Yes. That one. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Under 231. Yeah. Under Main Street. We yeah. need a drainage work, of course, which is nil, because as long as it can't get through the ditches, the drainage work we did from the building under our driveway to both ditches on both sides, it's dull and void because it can't drain anywhere regardless. You know, when, when it on, a rain, up, on a rain that size. On a rain, that, yes, yeah. absolutely on a rain that size. But it seems like if the porters, I know you said they would try to work to do something with the corn stalks, but insurance is going to end up subrogating against them, and they're aware of that, I'm sure. So I would think that would give them enough um, to fire under there, them to do something to be to work with us. Does that make sense? You know, the, the Because my insurance has already said, well, we will be finding out who owns right. this, oh, and they will oh, be have, have they? No, they haven't yet, but that's exactly. I'm like, we're. That's what you're. Okay. Yeah, that's what's happening right now. My my bill alone for the Blue Star restoration, and we were closed for two days to get it dried out, is twenty thousand dollars. Oh my that's goodness. That's where I'm at right now. Wow. You know, at the park when it was designed, the the probably twenty acres is designed for water to come out of the main ditches to flood our property to alleviate to help alleviate the water back in. So, so, so every rain, we know we're going to get a large, substantial amount of water. Well, this time, it got up in the playground equipment, washed all the trunk oh, rubber wow. out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, we're, we're out about $20,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I see it, too. I, yeah. I understand it. But that's the only thing, only remedy I could see would be a quicker remedy that we could see happen is working with the porters to get something done in that yeah, but even fixing the corn, great people. They're great people. Even, even fixing the corn stalks is not going to remedy the flooding. I'm it's going to help. help. Got to help. That's yeah. going to help, but it's Anything not going to remedy. Help. Anything would help. Yeah. A hedgerow like planted so back would help. Somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but if there was a ditch cut lengthwise to send it in the railroad. Railroad yeah. side, you know, catch. But here again, when you, when the railroad ditch fills up, it's still going to back up, roll over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, well, the, of course, I didn't know they bought Lonnie's farm. That makes a little bit of difference for them. I mean, they have access to the railroad ditch. What scares me is with the chisel plowing, when you, when you chisel plow, you're taking the, the fill material and injecting it in, in the dirt. So you get a big rain, you you still have washing. Now you're going to have mud. Mud. Mm -hmm. So, but like they told me when I was talking to them last week, the mud will slow down water. Well, that's true. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. Would it do any good for any of these folks to contact the Department of Transportation, Agriculture, anybody? Charlie. Charlie would probably be your. Because he's going to talk to everybody. He, he, he's been going around assessing already. Yeah. Door to door, door to door. No, he hasn't been to my parents' house. I 
I'd give him a call if he maybe missed you or something. I know he parked at the daycare. He was out trudging around. So maybe Sunday. I'll text him. Did the get a hold of him. I'm just looking for forward thinking. Like, no. I know what you're doing and we're getting and your phone calls. And so we've got to keep moving forward on how we're the problem because it's. But. I mean, yeah. regardless of being able, I mean, it's, you know, I know y'all have just much invest, more invested well, in me, but. You know, it affects my life. But it, well, it affects sure, these yeah. people's lives just because it's their homes. That's, oh, no, that's, I just sat down here and told last that this is just, it's not right. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how, how uh, helpless you feel when your hands are tied on something that I think I know a way, it won't fix the problem, it would alleviate it, but then when they tell me you don't have the authority to do that, mm -hmm. that hurts. I'm the first to admit it. So who would have to cut that dish, supporters, even though it would go, take it away from us too, and then if it got high enough, of course, it would float back this way. Which is still, I mean, digging a ditch might be worth it. Can they do that through the people? They can't on their property. They can't go on anybody else's property, right? Correct. But if they but bought Lonnie's, they, they have, have access to the railroad That is true. That is true. And that might be more uh, financially feasible to them as to getting sued by our insurances. Yeah, because they, exactly. they had the equipment. Exactly. Can this Ditch on 62 by the railroad re-cleaned out. Did you say it could or could not? That's state housing. Well, again, the state can clean it out, but they have the same problem. You can only go so deep because you get to 231, and then you get to, of course, Liberty Road, and then one on around. You can't go deeper than what the concrete bottoms are. Of course, when that road was widened, what was that, 1971 or two? They weren't having these kind of problems. Uh, Main Street. Yeah, um, like 62 up here by the railroad track. Yeah, but that, it always floods going toward Mac Henry. You know, it always floods up there. Yeah, because Mac Henry got hit really hard this last right. week too. Can, the, all, can that not be cleaned out because of the railroad? Or? Well, again, you can only clean it out so deep because it's still got to go through the culvert on Highway 231 on Main Street. And I should have asked this question earlier, but the ditches that are along the state highways and the federal highways, will they let us do anything to them? Is that something we can do? It would have to be permitted. And the ditch that runs under 231 down behind Felt Oil Field Crop Service, that is actually a railroad company, and you'll have better luck pulling chicken's teeth. Like anything from them. I mean, no chicken eggs. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's why I was hesitant while I go to say anything about the railroad with the trestles, because I don't know that we'll be able to get them to do anything. But I, I, I'm just going to lay it out there. We're looking at anything possible we can try to do to alleviate it and find help from somewhere. But like I said, I'm just not getting the best of reports from anywhere I go. Um, Larry, you know, like actually like, set up maybe a formal meeting with the porters? And like, is that worth a shot to kind of look at these that'll cost you this to dig this and we're going this far? We think it may would really help the community. I mean, we have it. I don't know where I would stand on that. I mean, Chad and I are good friends. Uh, but the city, I'm not saying you know, I'm well, sure that connection, but city wise. Well, but I, I, then it comes again, his property. Well, if he, only, if he bought part of Lonnie's, he probably his is in the city limits now. You know, I, I just don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't. I don't know the legalities of it. Yeah, I don't either. Maybe. Any yeah. thoughts on that? On set? Now, I know we can't make them. I've tried that. But no, no, no. We can't, we can't make them. Ask to come in for a meeting to go over maybe what possibilities we see could be done. Well, if, if nothing else, just setting up a meeting with these folks and the property owner and the farmer to try to see if there is any. We can do that for sure. If all parties will participate. If all parties will participate. And if our info is right, it would only be the quarters because they bought lines, and that's going to take it all the way to the Well, there's still that uh, Snodgrass property, unless they bought it, too. I hadn't heard that. I heard that. So, Lonnie, just keep his house in barn? I was just told today that I, I want to say it was 11 acres that he settled. Aren't they tearing down the end? The idea of being mm -hmm. We need to find out if they brought all the way to, uh, well, all the way to South Lafayette Street. Then who would go about setting a meeting like that up? Would that be something that we would be in a position to do, or is that something that the property owners 
need to say we would like to set this meeting well, we up. can I mean we can reach out to the pro to the farmer and see if they'd be willing to be with us. I mean we can't make them I have no problem with reaching out to them to see if we can set something up that way just be you know and try to act as a moderator for it to, or to get them to see if they'd be willing to we can do that I would want and don't take this the way it's going to sound but I appreciate you all coming but I would want other residents and property owners here as well yeah, I was hoping that would be you know, I, is that, I don't know, okay. I know many down there, you know, I don't know. Right, but, other, and. Other these folks, but, uh, uh, maybe we can find out who, who they are. Or at least go to door door and let them know what, if we can get something set up, let them know, because it, it so helps to have numbers. All of them or half of them? Well, or, as many as you can get, it just helps with numbers. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, right, gotcha. that's just the way it is. Uh, did any of y'all others did y'all have any insurance damage or damage that was going to insurance? No, there's no not, not, not flood insurance. Okay. Or it's costing us out of our pocket. Yeah, it's just it's running really my property and uh, just costing me. Well, well the reason I was asking so you're the only one who might have insurance. Well the way they're doing it is somehow the West Bend will decide how much percentage of water came in through doors. How much came up through drains? That's what they're figuring out. And they will pay depending on what came up through the drains, which we have pictures of it coming through the drains and all that. So there's going to be a percentage that I'm liable for, no doubt. What that amount is, I don't know yet. Well, and then they said that um, if it is because of something else going on behind the property, that they will subrogate. Okay. That might, I, I would keep following up with that. Because that's going to be your your uh, best. Uh, and if that is the case, let me check. I mean, they I don't care. Tell they actually farm farm our personal property. So we, I mean, like they're great people. I think if it's something that easy enough to, you know, and they have all the right ways because they own the land to put a ditch in to see if it helps any. I think they'd be more willing to do it if we all get on the same page and they have the land to that. Well, we'll reach out to them and see if they'd be willing to come down here and set up a meeting with. And let you all know when it is. Is it an evening okay to do it? Of an evening? Okay. I just know if it you know, continues, then my business won't sustain another another round of it. Insurance will drop me, I won't even be able to get insurance. You know. I understand. Mm -hmm. Had you had water in your building before? I'm sure before I had it. We didn't find any mold or anything. Well, I, I had never heard of it getting in that building is why I was asking. No, we didn't. They, we didn't have any mold, and of course, Blue Star came in and took care of it ASAP. Um, when, when did you buy it? We leased it. We had a three-year well, contract to purchase, and we've been there a little over a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. You weren't there in 2020 then. That's what I was... I was just, but I, I, don't think I it got in the building. Now. I never heard of it getting in the building there at that time. Someone told me that it got in the storage buildings. Does anybody know if that's accurate? Because that might be, might get that fella to. Uh, that's the first I've heard of that. Yeah, and I can't remember who told me that. I'll ask Jason and see if it was him. I think they may be right. Like the storage building beside it. No, it's talking about the ones with the orange doors. The guy from Butler County owns. I show manufacturers. You know about the one What's there that guy's beside them? <laughs> one, two, three, one. The one there by the cabins. Huh? Ashley, yeah. No, yeah. Beside Gary Ashley. No, no, this is the, the storage units there that Gary oh, Ashley owns. That's Morgantown AMP. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. Someone told me that, but I do not remember who told me. I don't know if they were just speculating or if it was actual. Up here, oh, his up here? Okay. We had water that we'd never had before. At your house? No. At the church? Church. Did it get in your... In your just a little bit. We've never even been there. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. 8.1. How much? 8.1. I've heard 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 8.1. I've he
Okay, as soon as, yeah. as soon as we can get a hold of them and see what they say, we'll start that. Start that. Uh, do you mind? Is it okay to share what your insurance company told you about? Okay. And I know. I just, I just want to when you reach out to them, kind of let them know. You know, that's that's what I'm wanting to say. It might give them a little more incentive to. And is there anybody, if, this, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but anybody in the group that would be a point of contact? Like if you reach out to the porters and they say, yes, we would love to meet. You want to be the point of contact and you can let everybody know and then everybody can start knocking on the doors. <laughs> would that work? And is that how you're thinking? Is that appropriate? That's fine. You feel? Yeah. have to do like we used to do the prayer lines in churches before we had the texting. Oh, yeah, one call. We would call somebody yeah, and then they were, had somebody else on the list one to call, call and then they had somebody else on the list to call. A.D., can I ask you a question about that, Yvonne? Like the subrogation, is, would they be protected by any of the ag agricultural laws? If our insurance, you know, they're saying we would try to subrogate, would the agricultural laws protect them? Subrogate against whom? The of the borders. The landowners. The landowners. Uh, uh, probably. They'd probably be protected probably. by the laws of some yeah, sort. Yeah, if the if the law, I haven't checked the law, but if Paul, if Paul, if Paul, it's that broad. Uh, then basically, you're trying to subrogate back against the landowner uh, for. Basically, an act of God, if you wanted to call it that, was the rain is, you said it was eight inches? 8.1. 8.1 inches. And, and I'm not sure what the subrogation claim would be back against the landowner. Uh, and I think they probably would be protected, actually. Um, but, but, like you said, he but wants that's, to be a that's, good that's an opinion off the top of my head. Which sometimes is the worst. <laughs> well, because I, I have I've been told the same thing, with the exception of one thing that said might help is the fact that this has happened once before, back in June of 2020, and they were made aware of it at that time. That's what my insurance said. Is it's been an ongoing problem of the corn stalks, and is you know, and I think that's what they were. So there is. Also. She. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what she told me. She said it's going to be a long shot, mm -hmm. but she said there is a possibility there of negligence because they knew there was an continuous, issue continuous and a potential support. issue, and they did not do anything to it. Well, I know we, let's, let's throw the corn stalk board out of there because they actually had beans in it this year. So, so this year, so I worked out this year after let, they just came through? Let's, let's, okay. let's just call it debris. Well, I'm yeah. just. Debris. 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 Because when, you, when you say your yeah. corn stalk stopped up yeah. my ditch or whatever, they're just like, ah, oh, we didn't have corn this year. So let's corn last year, didn't it? Uh, in in twenty one? Twenty two. Twenty two I mean, beans yeah. and all those corn stalks yes. still? Yeah. Yes. So it's Yeah, I knew they did no till. So say no till was a big practice because of the roaches. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, but that doesn't yeah, when you have eight point one inches, it's not gonna help the, exactly. that's not gonna help on no till. I thought they had corn last year. Wow. And beans the year before. Something that's in the corn stalks cause the seed to have more money to clean that up out of the street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty significant. Yeah. It is pretty significant. But it's coming from everywhere. It's not just coming from that. Well, and, I, and I'm going to say, and I'm not saying this to be smart about it, but technically, all we have to clean up is what's in the street and the ditches. And, and but, with that said, but, that's what we're, we want you to push it out so we can get it. To, we're trying to help to get that out. Uh, and I said, I didn't mean that to sound the way I knew it sounded, but uh, we want to do anything we can to help. And that's something we can do to help. We can get it pushed out because if it's on us, it's ours to clean up. Kind of like the lead deal and stuff. But there's, there's some things we can do because, like I say, you can bring it to us. We can't go get it. <laughs> Could you find that as the city's attorney, they be negligent with their debris? 
and then it does that to the ditches? I mean, is that something but the city could? Most likely, the only way you will find that out is to actually get a lawyer and take it to court and see where the ju see where the judge or jury goes with it. Yeah, they won't volunteer. You can assume that the landowner or the landowner's liability carrier, neither one, are going to voluntarily pay anything. And, and do remember that somebody, for, to, to support that claim, somebody would have to have uh, in place uh, somebody that it has an expertise with regard to the water, the amount of water, what the ditch's capacity is, what effect, if any, that the corn stalks had on the increased uh, flooding. You'd have to have somebody that actually conducts some type of study to determine whether it is a minor cause, the most major cause, or somewhere in between. And you can find experts that have testify on these issues, but you'd almost have to have one. Would we not agree that the corn stalks are the most major cause right there beside my building? I mean, I've got the pictures of them digging out. I mean, it is, it is, a, it is, it does cause the, the ditches to get full, mm -hmm. but the water has nowhere to go. That's the reason the flooding comes in the first place. Sure. If it had a place for the water to go, we wouldn't have any flooding at all. Yeah, but, it was, but it was stopped up there. So. I agree, and I understand, but it's still, it might have helped it a little bit, but it's still going to affect it. Every little water. bit counts. Yeah. I agree. But I agree. I'm I guess saying, look at it realistic. Well, we'll look at it but overall. If the rain picture. fell that, that much that quickly, if it was able to move, yeah. it would not have backed up that high right there. Correct. And then, well, Larry said, that, well in your opinion, enough. in my opinion, I want to stress that. Right. We're not experts at it. I've no, dealt with water and water flow all my life, but and I can't imagine that that wouldn't help. But I can't say that. We can see the corn stalks. That could say it. Yeah. You understand? Well, the reason the reason Los Angeles built that river, you know, the concrete river they've got in the middle of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. is for the water to get out of there. That was the whole reason they built that. That's a good idea. Well, I'm serious. That's why they built yes. that in Los Angeles. That's was that right. reason? Yes, and that is a great idea. Yeah. Personally, I think. But you, I mean, you've seen that you can downplay the drainage yeah. stopping up with those corn stalks. Uh, uh, no, I agree. I agree, but what they're going to say is, well, yeah, but you've got corn stalks, they're laying like that. They're still permeable, so water's still going through. So did they cause? Not the amount of corn stalks. I, I, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate. They're going to say, it. did that cause a 10%? Was that 20% of the cause, or was that 70% of the cause? Right. And that's something I can't answer. And well, is that to study the That's going to have to have now? some kind of expert, and I don't know. Would that yeah. be beneficial to the city also, though, to find that out? Yeah, it should. Probably not until it was at court, and just because of finding somebody that, for one reason, they're, gonna, why, they're not going to come down here and put their name on something unless there's a reason and they're getting paid for it. That's just the way they, am I wrong, A.V.? That, no, you're right about that. Uh, let me ask a real silly, simple question, but how many corn stalks are left out there? My goodness. They just come from everywhere. They're not just coming from that. Well, there's no, you don't even know where they come from. But we if, no if we were to build, say like crazy. the L.A. Crazy. thing, if we were to build that all the way around and it got over to, you know, we built it all the way around the city and it come out at, at McDonald's, it's still going to back up because McDonald's, from there on, is not going to be able to have the water flow. There's so much water coming down at one time. You have to have a pond or a lake or something for it to go in. And there's just not enough of that around here to absorb that much rain that fast. Well, That's the main and there's not enough elevation difference either. Yeah. It's, it's all flat. I've always wanted a water park, but I didn't want full corn stalks. <laughs> It just you didn't want to wash your crumb rubber off the park either, uh, did you? No, no, no. Well, Sandy, there was a pond back there on that farmland. There was a pond back there, and it's been filled up. Sounds like you need a lake, not a pond. Through the years. Oh. They were trying to fill up a whole pond back there. And so that's where we're getting. That's where your corn stalks have come from. Lake Arp. There was a pond back there. Oh, what were you aware of that? I knew there was a pond back there. She told me the pond back there had been filled up. I remember we need to build the lagoons back. <laughs> no, my, I guess my question is, is if we try to get the water out of here quicker, 
and it goes on AV's property downstream, is AV going to be back to us? Yeah. yeah. And that's the way it works. <laughs> just keep, you got to add to the problem. Yeah. Well, one of the problems of diverting the water, and Kevin and I were talking about it, if you divert the water from its natural course, you better darn well know where it's going to go. Where yeah. it's going. And what it's going to do. You're going to have to be able to contain it. Because, because if you divert it, and instead of flooding their property, it's flooding a whole bunch of other areas. It's They're right in the same place. And then, in the same exact situation. And there's, right. then you know you're liable for that yeah. one. You, you are that, right. is, that one is one thing that this, with agriculture or anybody you can do, is if they change the course right. and flow of water. Yep. So would it, would it not be beneficial to the city to hire somebody to come in and do some consulting and to see the lay of the land and the way? Best thing to do? Well, oh, why we get with Corps engineers, isn't it? Well, and, and again, this is going to sound bad. I hate to do that because I know what they're going to tell us as far as cleaning out all the way to Rough River. And I know that oh is virtually impossible, yeah. not only from a financial standpoint, but from the standpoint of getting all your permitting and, and approvals through the Corps of Engineering Division of Water. So you don't think there's anything to be done closer around to alleviate the problem without taking it all the way to... Well, again, cool. where would the water go? It, Even if we get it to where it's running faster, if it runs faster just to a spot and stops, it's going to back up anyway. It's got to have some place to go. I, I understand. Well, <laughs> but you, have but you have to realize is it's not going anywhere. Yeah, but you have and to. It's not full on that end. Getting that much water that that short amount of time, it's it's not stopping because it's full way over this way. It's stopping because it's, it's stopping blocked. because it's not moving past this area. Yes. So we can't keep saying that. Oh, well, it's still don't have anywhere else to go. It's never even made it there. Uh, well, actually, there was some car rescues where people were in water. Yeah. yeah. Where it's flooded there before out there. Over on Liberty Road, yeah. Further, further down from us. I mean, just because the course stop was here, it was flooded down there, too. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and I agree with you. I, I mean, I don't know what you're saying. But I'm so, <coughs> But it is flooded down there. Because the water had nowhere to go, and we'd be flooded a lot more oh, yeah. areas than we are. Well, I think that's why you're seeing areas that never used to be flooded getting flooded and getting up higher than it used to get. All right, so hiring some of the city, hiring somebody to do some type of checking everything out is out of the question. Well, I'm going to say it's out of the question. I just don't know that it's going to solve any problems. And well, we'll never know if that's, somebody doesn't check out. Well, but I'm not saying we won't look into it. All right. I'm just saying. Don't get your hopes up. Yeah, but I just, from my experience and with, I just don't see it. What about the railroad? Um, what do what, what you call those things out there on Liberty? The trestles. Trestles. What's if that would that? Well, it can't hurt. Help? I don't know that it'll help, no. but it can't hurt. Yeah. So that might uh, be an option. So you already you already talked to them. Right? State Highway Department's State been reached State. out to them. I think that's what we're just wanting some type. Not, we know it's not going to be a quick remedy. We know it's not going to be a cheap remedy. It might be something we have to do ourselves and not done at all. We just want to make sure we're forward thinking we're here. Trying to find a. Exhausting every possibility that we could do. So, meeting with the porters, you're talking to the highway patrol about the. Or the. State. About the trestles mm -hmm. and state. I mean. You do it more than me. And then you'll let us know about it. Yeah, as soon as we talk. We'll try to reach out to them tomorrow. See, if he'll, yeah. If you don't care in the morning, that way you can get him quicker than I can. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, go ahead and find out from him too if they did buy Lonnie's and see if see if they bought Snipers. They bought Lonnie's. They might have bought it too. We're going to have to start building like they do in Florida on legs. It got, it got higher at our house than I've, it's ever, ever, ever got. Well, Paul's house, didn't water get under Paul's house not too awful long ago? Out on oh, yeah. the road? Oh, There's a car. Yeah. One his house is built on water. That's a His car right And right you'd think there's no way water could get there. You'd think there's no way. And then it gets under there. Yeah. And I know y'all have a huge mess over there, and you're looking to do the best, too. But yeah. Well, and it's. Y'all, you know, we need to see the progress, too, because it's been ongoing. Y'all said the rain's getting worse, and then we even have a bigger water hand, so it's not going to get any better. He's bald. You know what I mean? 
So I was in Florida during the hurricane, both uh, hurricanes, Ian and the other one. Well, and the car? I firsthand saw I said, I what it did, but it could have. Our lack of forward thinking did. And they're never going to recover from this. That's it, that city has lost probably 70% of its ability to make income. Which city? The, the Daytona Beach down there where the hurricanes hit. The first one was bad, the second one was worse. So there's it was really bad. I got there the day after the one minute. So now, was there the day before the other one? I haven't brought since have last time. Who's been in charge of the project? Because I'm he's aware of, like, like sit behind me. You got in three inches in somebody's car. I'd love to go out there. I want to go to Montana. So he didn't get in here. I was afraid it would, but I wonder if the concrete. Well, but I mean, it almost got in here in 2020. I mean, because I was down here. Gotcha. I remember. Yeah, because the main is lived right over here. Well, yeah. Is it Montana? Yeah. I don't care anyway. We are not me. At some point, it got in down at his store. No, his store wasn't there in 2020. When was it? Yeah, yeah. Lord. It was before then. He got in his store a little bit. When he was down there where the okay. camps. Are the barbarians one of those? Well, because they were sitting out on the they they said it was Do what? It was parked on Fifth Street. Is off to the list? Yeah, it's going to wait and get our attention. Are we, are we going to have to go into a conversation? Ask Larry, I don't know of anything. No. As soon as we get back and find something out for them, we'll get a hold of you. And so there. And like I say, we're still looking. I do, I'm sorry. I do have some meetings with KLC people. They're our best resource of finding anything out. Will y'all get an update from Charlie Shields? He's in Florida right now, but when he gets back, we'll hit him up and see what's going on as far as who always talked to and how many he's talked to and, and he has not talked to you all okay you might call too just so i don't in case we so we don't all miss miss it unless something dropped through the cracks but would it be a good idea for charlie to be at that meeting too uh, I mean, i'll talk to him i don't know yeah okay as soon as we know something, we will be in touch. <laughs> yeah, because it's a it's a problem everywhere. I mean, through downtown, it's it's getting worse. Thank you all very, very oh, much for coming. Anytime. We, we truly gonna, appreciate it. And Nikki has my number. If She's got mine, too. Yeah, so don't hesitate to reach out. I, I might not be able to do much, but we'll listen and try to come up with something. Keep moving forward, though, we do. Thank you. She's just like crazy. She's like crazy. Yeah, that's true. I've never seen one. But she really is. She really is. So do I need to make a motion to adjourn? No, we don't need a closed session. Does anybody else have anything else to? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. So much. That's the most important one. <laughs>